Please, close your eyes. Just listen. You can open your eyes. Now think for yourself, did you experience a shift? Today I'm going to present to you the five gears of your brain, which you can use to not only live a le happy life, but to live up to your full potential. First, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Leo van Woerden. I'm a neuroscientist, a passionate biohacker, so to speak. I love to help people get into optimal mental and physical shape. But actually, when I was young, this was completely against the odds. Let me take you back to when I was a teenager, 14 years old, it's 1992. I'm living with my parents and five brothers and sisters. Both parents are doctors. And I'm the black sheep of this family. I'm not too smart and absolutely not good at school. What I love to do is to guide my tremendous amounts of energy, lots of sports, hockey, tennis, judo, and I especially love to play the drums. Now, this is always up to late in the evening, and of course I have to get up early to go to school. So nights are short, but you know, I don't want to sleep at all. I'm fit, strong, I can sleep when I'm dead. So, it really frustrates my mother, ambitious as she is, that my grades are going down and down, so she takes me to a colleague of her to see what could be wrong with me. So, I come to a psychiatrist, and I remember walking into his room, and he looks at me, shakes my hand, hello, Leo, asks me one question, starts a long conversation with my mother. Before I know it, I hear something about ADHD, disease, can't really do anything about it. We can treat symptoms with medication. So here I am, first of my generation, 1992, on medication, treated like a patient. But I don't feel like one. But I'm thinking, is, is there something wrong with me? Am I born the wrong way? Have I gotten ill because of the way I lived? But most importantly, can I also change? I was really intrinsically motivated to learn more about the biology of the human beings. So I started studying. And the more I loved what I did, the higher my grades became. Interesting thing was that everybody around me in these days had the same motto. We shouldn't sleep. Now's the time to build our lives, our careers. We can sleep when we're dead. But now this moment, classes of neurophysiology, my professor teaches me something really interesting. The brain, you see, which is stuck in our skull, was used to be considered to be a static organ. But the opposite was true. It's a highly plastic organ. It adapts constantly, and you can even train it like a muscle. So there I am, well, like, there's not only hope for me, but for humanity. I'm going to invent something that people can use to get in an optimal mental shape and have better days. So, when you want to hack a system and upgrade it, it's important that you know how the manual works, right? So allow me to give you a really short neuroscience crash course. In your brain, there are 86 billion neurons that constantly, potentially fire and wire together. And they do that by passing along electrical currents. And when we add up all this electricity, this communication, what we see is brainwave activity. These are rhythms from half a hertz to over 100 or maybe a couple of hundred hertz. Every frequency stands for the different brilliant processes in your brain that are going on, really important. But actually, we distinguish five brain waves. I call these the brain gears. Okay, so where was I? Oh, yes. I told you that I was going to invent something for people to have better days, right? But it turned out that everything you do on the day is completely useless if you're sleep-deprived. Now, let me give you some statistics. 
45% of the world's population is at risk, health risk, because of a lack of sleep. Most people are completely unaware how sleep deprived they are. I was definitely one of them. But scientific literature shows that a lack of sleep increases your risk of practically any disease known to mankind. And what was interesting to me was that a teenager with a little lack of sleep can already show symptoms of ADHD. Go figure. All right, but the question now is that when people are sleep deprived, what actually, because they don't sleep, what actually is it that they are doing? Well, human beings got themselves all the way up to the food chain by using this part of their brain, the frontal cortex. It gives us all our human characteristics, so to speak. Imagine yourself working hard, multitasking, although it's still difficult. We do it with the frontal part of our brain. When we're stressed, building the world around us. This is what we call, in neuroscientific terms, the beta brainwave zone. I call it your professor state. And it is your fourth gear. It sounds like this. Maybe you recognize it now. A little bit fast, right? A little bit chaotic. But it has some superpowers. Now, do you recognize that sometimes you're trying to solve a complex problem and it just doesn't seem to work? But you're trying so hard. But then, all of a sudden, when you're not actively working on it, maybe you're taking a shower or walking outside with your dog, then all of a sudden, the solution pops into your head. I see you nodding. OK, what happens now? Well, just like on the highway with your car, when you shift down a gear, that's the way to you know, catch up. Same with your brain. Your brain can go to a different state. This is called the alpha state. The frontal cortex is now more at ease. Other parts of the brain take part of the communication, making you more creative. You're open to your surroundings. You can actively listen and be there. This is also why I call it the state of the dog. It's your third gear. It sounds more like this. How does that sound? It's more groovy, right? We should use this gear a lot more. All right. But there's a problem. The way we work, we work hard today, a day, right? The thing is that in our brains, we also create a mess. Do me a favor and all grab your head. And I'm serious, I want you to feel your head because you will feel the heart helmet. This is your skull. Under there now lies your brain. Your brain is the most brilliant, adaptable sort of biological quantum computer the universe ever invented. Still hasn't been copied. No, no, no. Your brain weighs only three pounds, but it burns a lot of calories, and it uses up to 20% of the complete energy consumption of your body, which is a tremendous amount of energy. Three pounds, by the way, is less than 2% of an average body weight. You can lower your hands. So, from an energy perspective considered, it's a lot, right? It's an interesting organ. But as it burns energy, waste is created, and we need to get rid of this waste. You cannot do that in a day. So at day, we work, study, and train, but at night, we optimize and gain. And when we fall asleep, there's something happening. Your brain really shrinks, brain fluid is increased, and you wash away toxic waste and making you less vulnerable to a list of diseases that is endless. But now, your core features of your brain are now more actively working. We also call this your reptile brain, because mammals and reptiles have these structures in common. You boost your immune system, your energy, your strength, all happens in this crocodile state, as I like to call it. Your brain creates delta brain waves, and we call this the deepest level of sleep. This is your first gear. It sounds like this. Think for yourself if you recognize the rhythm. It is the same rhythm as the heart. Apparently, 
The heart and the brain are well connected, boosting your vitality in this only two to three hours lasting moment in the first part of the night. So I told you that I love to study, but I also love to play video games. One of them in particular called Tomb Raider. So as I didn't care about sleep, I played for a long time, also in the evening, and this night I was exhausted. Couldn't find the hidden keys, yeah, because you have to be creative for this game. I couldn't find doors. The, the game was probably hacked. I thought there was a bug in. It couldn't be me. I fell in a long, deep sleep, and after a real long, good sleep, I woke up, and I felt so refreshed. New energy with a helicopter view. I grabbed the joystick and I walked my way completely easy through all the levels. I saw everything that I didn't see the day before. And now neuroscience teaches us what really happens in the night. Neurons that fire, fire together over day, but they try to wire and make long lasting connections overnight. But you also take up a lot of information that is useless or maybe even false. You have to cut that away. This is also what's happening in the second phase of the night. You lower your emotions as your memories also are connected to these emotions. So you're, you balance actually your emotions and lower fear. We call this brain state the theta brainwave. I call it the state of the eagle because you create your helicopter view here. Your brain is quite active now as this is the phase in which you dream the most. And it's your second gear, it sounds like this. Now, we just talked about four gears, right? Who's interested in the fifth? Let me see hands, because it gets more interested now. You probably all know comic heroes, right? They all have a few things in common. They all have individual superpowers, but only when they work together fluently as a team, this is when they reach their full potential and make miracles happen. The same, it works in your brain. The sum is more than its parts, I would like to say about that. So, the fifth gear. You're now in the highest frequency range, which is called the gamma brainwave state. This is the optimal performance state of your brain. And it's the way you follow the process of shifting the other four gears that gets you high up to the fifth gear. And if you don't switch the first four gears, you won't even have a fifth gear. Go figure. So there is room to the upside. Your brain has still got unlimited potential. You all probably have heard, or maybe you know people with superhuman skills, human calculators, people with photographic memory, etc. Maybe you think this is not for me. And that's not important, because it's not about unlocking the maximum capacity. It is about the useful capacity, what's useful for you. You need to focus. It's the only way you will have your good life. All right. Now you might ask, how? How do we do that? Well, one thing in particular is really important. You want to make sure that you follow your passion throughout the day and work towards your purpose. Be happy and do what you like. It's really important because that will help you build the brain you want. And then, if you want to switch gears optimally, you want to take control over a couple of things. And you can do that. It's what I love to do on a professional way by measuring things in your body, about your DNA, your microbiome, and all these things use biohacking techniques. Now, you want to control your sensory input, your environment, so to speak. So make sure that it's optimal. That means your light, your audio, everything you hear and see, but also surround yourself with beautiful souls that give you positive energy. Further, your behavior. Make sure you exercise well, but of course also with your mind. Ask yourself the right and positive questions. And last but not least, Science has shown us that personalized nutrition is the way to boost your vitality and to 
optimize your metabolism. Okay, I'm gonna make it really simple today for you. If you remember these two things, it's all about choosing the right timing for everything you do in life, whether it's you eat, exercise, sport, and sleep. And then, when you have your optimal timing, stick to a good rhythm, day by day. This will make it strong. Everything in nature is strong because of a good rhythm. Last, remember this. At day, we study and train, and at night, we optimize, connect the dots, and gain. Now you might think, how does the fifth gear sound, right? <laughs> All right. Allow me to give you a day of shifting gear. And see if you recognize the rhythms. Thank you.